in the splendor of your majesty from deep within my spirit sings oh Understand the depths of your word in Jesus' name. We're asking, O oh Lord, that as you give us understanding, you also give us the desire and the heart, the conviction to live by your word every moment of our lives in Jesus' name. And we're asking, O oh Lord, that as we live day by day close to you, according to your word, we'll be ready and prepared for what is coming before us in Jesus' name. We know the church is waiting for the rapture. And we pray, Lord, when your saints marching will be among the number that will be with you at the time of that rapture in Jesus' name, that eyes will not see, that we will not experience, that we will not go through the great tribulation coming upon the people of the world, even after the church has gone in Jesus' name. Be with us today. Help us to understand. Help us to follow. Help us to fully follow you and to decide that our lives, every moment, will be lived to the glory of your name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're looking at Revelation chapter 17, and I'm reading to you from verse 1 all through to verse 6. Revelation chapter 17 from verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee the judgment of the great all that seated upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk of the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away. In the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored, colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and, and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, co in scarlet color, and dead with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead 
was the name reaching mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and i saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of jesus and when i saw her i wondered there with great admiration great astonishment or great surprise those are the verses we're looking at today and in these verses we have described to us the mother of abominations you see that right there in verse in verse 5 and upon her forehead was a name reaching mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and the mother of the abominations of the earth and so in the study today we're looking at the full description of the mother of abominations the chapter says very much about this mother of harlots, this mother of abominations of the earth. She is variously described in the passage we have read together already. Number one, as a great all. Number two, as a harlot with whom the kings of this world, the kings of the earth, have committed, have, have committed fornication. Number three is described as a woman arrayed in purple and scarlet color having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Number four, as it goes on in, this, in the description of their spiritual alert, spiritual, spiritually, spiritual alert and system, it says, number four, that it's the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of the Lord Jesus Christ. The question then is, who does this or the adulteress the harlot represent? A harlot, you understand, is a prostitute. A harlot or a prostitute is an unfaithful sensual woman selling herself, selling her body for money. And this individual is referred to, or this particular system is referred to by these various names. And as you come to verse 5, you understand, it's not just talking about an individual. It's talking about a system. An organization, a body, and a worldwide body for that matter. A body that is having influence not to just in a, in a single location, but all over the earth. Look at verse 5 again. And upon her forehead was a name reaching. Mystery. When something is mysterious, it's something hidden. It's something we don't understand normally until it is disclosed exposed and revealed and interpreted for understanding and it's referred to as mystery and it is called babylon the great but you understand it goes beyond the old babylon because the old babylon is not a mystery the old babylon was revealed the old babylon everybody knew you knew the location you knew the king and you knew the activities and you knew the time of the empire but this one is mystery and it is mystery Babylon the Great. And now it is referred to as the mother of Halos. The mother that is the one that has given birth to halotry, spiritual halotry, mysterious halotry. And also is the mother of the abominations of the earth. Not just of a location, but of the whole earth. How do you understand this kind of picture? When you think about the church, you understand this mystery babylon because the church that is the true church is pictured as the bride of christ so then the highlight will be the unfaithful untrue false apostate church let's look at the church to start with in second corinthians chapter chapter 11. second corinthians chapter 11 looking at verse 2 you will see how the apostle by the spirit of god speaks about the church for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you to a chaste virgin to Christ, as a chaste virgin to Christ. And so when you're thinking about the church, you're thinking of, about a virgin, a pure, spotless, sinless, holy, righteous bride. We're told in Ephesians chapter 5, still talking about the church that is the true church talking about the true church we have Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church that means then the church is the bride of, the, of Christ 
and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it or the washing of water by the word that he might present it present that church that virgin that spotless body and that spotless washed white than whiter than snow that is washed whiter than snow in the blood of the lamb that church a glorious church he presents to himself not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish it tells us in verse 32 this is a great mystery but i speak concerning christ and the church and as we come to revelation chapter 19 still talking about the church revelation chapter 19 reading from verse 6 and i heard a seat word the voice of a great multitude as the voice of many waters and as the voice of the mighty thundering saying hallelujah for the lord god omnipotent train it let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints and he said unto me right blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the lamb and he said unto me these are the true saints of god you've seen there the picture of the church is a bride and is a virgin and is holy and righteous is sinless and spotless but when you think of the war then of you think of the harlot come back to chapter 17 of revelation in revelation chapter 17 it talks about another kind of person this one is pictured as a woman and this one is pictured as a mother and she is also pictured as an harlot a woman a harlot as well as a mother as we go back to verse 1 it says there came one of the seven angels which had the seven verse and talked with me saying unto me come hither and i will show thee the judgment of the great all uh, that uh, when you talk about boredom or you're talking about the war you're talking about an adulteress that seated upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth has committed fornication and inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of a fornication so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and i saw a woman here you see that she is referred to as a woman i saw this woman seated uh, sitting upon a scarlet colored beast full of the names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and dead with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name reaching mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and i saw the woman drunken of the blood of the saints and of the blood of the martyrs of jesus and when i saw her i wondered with great admiration and this a woman or this war or this adulteress or this harlot and we're told concerning her that uh, she's sitting upon many waters and it says that it says these uh, many waters the interpretation is there you find in verse 15 many waters verse 15 and it says unto me the waters which thou sowest where the war the halo the woman and these apostate church seated a peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues the apostate church then that's already worldwide even now will have worldwide control and worldwide influence during the great tribulation because it is this apostate church it is this uh, the opposite of the contrary part to the true church this one will have a great power great influence at the time of the great tribulation the religious system of the last days will be an unmistakable manifestation of satan's counterfeit of the true of true christianity and the symbolism of spiritual halotry or adultery is always uh, you know of the people who outwardly carry the name of god while actually they are worshiping and serving other gods 
as we refer to the children of Israel, you remember that the children of Israel were referred to as being married to the Lord God Almighty. But when they polluted themselves, corrupted themselves, and when they became unfaithful to the Lord, they were referred to as harlots. In Isaiah chapter 1, Isaiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 21. Isaiah chapter, tw chapter 1, verse 21. How is a faithful city become an harlot? It's referring to the people of Israel that they were faithful to the Lord, but now they are falling. They were pure before the Lord, but now they are perverted. They were holiness unto the Lord, but now they have gone into harlotry spiritually. How is a faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodging it, but now murderers. You'll see then what Israel became. And you will see what a greater part of the church will become. We're told in Jeremiah chapter 3, Jeremiah chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 2, reading from verse 3. Again, it's talking about the past state or the past condition, the past standing of the children of Israel. How are they? They were holy unto the Lord. They were righteous before the Lord. They were the people of God. But when they went back before the Lord, when they went back from the Lord, they became backsliders. They were falling. And then they were referred to now as hallows. In Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 3, Israel was holiness unto the Lord, the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, says the Lord. It's referring to the past experience or the past status or the past stage of the children of Israel. They were holiness unto the Lord. But what came upon them, they backslid. In Jeremiah chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 6. The Lord said also unto me, in the days of Josiah the king, as I have seen, that which backsliding Israel has done, she is gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree and there has and, the, and there has played the harlot you know in chapter 2 of jeremiah it says it was holiness unto the lord but now in verse 6 of chapter 3 of jeremiah it says they are backsliding and now that backsliding is is identified or equated with harlotry they there they have played the harlot and I said after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw when all the causes thereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorcement. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot. You understand that Israel was divided into actually two kinds of two kingdoms. You have ten tribes on one side, two tribes on the other side. The ten tribes went into evil, into idolatry. And God said, I've rejected them. They are the kingdom of Israel. They have gone into spiritual adultery or idolatry. And yet Judah, the kingdom of Judah, seeing that and seeing that the Lord had rejected Israel, they still went in the same way. And Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. In verse 9, and it came to pass through the likeness of our order that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and uh, with stalks. Committed adultery with stones and stalks, that means she went into idol worship. And that idol worship is referred to as spiritual idolatry or spiritual adultery. And so you understand what we're talking about. As we come back to Revelation chapter 17, verse 1, all through to verse 6. Let me just help you to understand this. That it's talking about the apostate church. And that in the last days, at the time of the great revolution, there will be the manifestation of this apostate church. And you will see, it will be referred to as a mystery. And the Bible says, the mystery of iniquity already works. Only he who now let us will let until he will be taken out of the way. Which means, the true church is still hindering the full manifestation of the characteristics of the adulterous church, or the apostate church, or mystery Babylon, or the murder of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And all the people that join the apostate church, that join the backsliding church, 
that join the church that are not firmly standing on Christ, the cornerstone, and the head. They'll be part of this harlot, Babylon, mystery, mother of abominations, and mother of harlots. And when you join, uh, to join them is very, very, is uh, something that is going to bring real trouble upon the people in those days. Number one, you understand, when you join the apostate church, it's only the true church that will go away in the rapture. When the rapture takes place, you will not be able to go. There's some people that say it doesn't matter which church I attend. It doesn't matter which assembly I go to. It doesn't matter the people I fellowship with. All that matters is just my relationship with the Lord. You are wrong. It's not like that. Because you see that apostate church will be looked at together as an entity, as a group, as a woman, harlot, as the mother of abominations. Let me give you these uh, words to hang your thoughts on. Number one, it is very dangerous to join the apostate church. You can see from what we are reading and studying. Number two, it is very deceptive. Because you see the deception. It will look as if we are still serving God. We are still calling on the same God. Israel did not know that they had gone away from the Lord until Isa came to them. Until Jeremiah came to them. Until Ezekiel pointed it out. It is very deceptive. Number one, dangerous. Number two, deceptive. Number three, it is defiling. Because, uh, you know, you join that fellowship, you join that organization, you join that church, maybe a new church, maybe an old church. But the whole system is a system of uh, you know, people are falling away from the Lord. Maybe a backslider established a new church, or maybe a church that has been there for a long time, and they're not standing totally on the totality of the word of God. Number three, it is defiling. Because it's referred to as an adult. Number, number four, it is deadening. It deadens your conscience. It deadens your heart. It deadens your mind. And you'll be doing things as if your conscience is seared with a hot iron. Number five, it is demonizing. Because uh, they're seduced by evil spirits. And these evil spirits demonize them and deaden them. And they do not know their left from their right. They do not know right doctrine from wrong doctrine, false doctrine from sound doctrine anymore. And number six, it is destructive. Number seven, it is damning. It damns the soul. And uh, you will see what we're studying as we go into the judgment of this harlot, of this mystery Babylon the Great, of this mother of harlots, abominations of the earth. You will see damnation will come eventually at the end of the day. We're told in, um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 13. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 13, it says, For such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of christ and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves uh, uh, tr be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works you will see then the danger of uh, joining the apostate church you will see then the, uh, the danger of joining a church uh, where you have, you know, either a backslider leading or, you know, a person that appears to be leading the word of God, transforming himself to be an apostle of Christ, but it's not of God. Very, very dangerous, deceptive, defiling, deadening, demonizing, destructive, and damning. You look at Second Thessalonians. In Second Thessalonians, I'm reading from chapter 2, verse 7. Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the walking of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. In the last days, there will be the multiplication of those wonders, signs and wonders, but they are deceptive. 
they are dangerous and they are damning and they are defiling and they are deafening they are demonizing it will suck you in if you join them into the mnemonic system and eventually will damn your soul it tells us in verse 10 with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie and the new prophet or the new preacher or the new founder of the church will deceive you. And if you don't have the love of the truth yourself, if in your own heart you've been wondering, am I going to, you know, continue living a righteous life, a holy life, and it's going to be restricted, am I not going to have some real freedom and grow wings and do as I like? If you have been like that, you'll be sent a spirit of delusion, and you'll believe a lie that they all might be damned, who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. In uh, First uh, Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 1. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. And therefore it's no, it's, it's no surprise when some people have been in the faith, when they go away from the faith, when they backslide from the faith, when they fall away from the faith, when they depart from the faith. Because now the Spirit speaketh expressly, pointedly, very clearly, certainly, that in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith. They'll be giving heed to seducing spirits, enticing spirits. It's a spirit of seduction. And if you understand the spirits of seduction, they use quite a lot of things. Seduction uses psychology. And seduction uses demonology. And seduction uses evil power. And when you combine everything together, the flesh and the spirit and psychology and philosophy and everything and science and for, for, uh, science falsely so-called, when you bring everything together, you then give heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And therefore, there's no feeling anymore. And so you find the danger in joining the false religious system of this world. We're going to divide the study to three parts. Number one, the position and the perversion of the mother of Harlot. The position and the perversion of the mother of Harlot. Number two, the power and the possession of the mother of abominations. Number three, the portrait and the persecution and the mystery of atrocities we come back to number one in number one we have the position and the perversion of the mother of harlots i come to revelation chapter 17 and we're looking at verses one and two revelation chapter 17 we're looking at verses one and two and there came one of the seven angels which are the seven vials, and talk with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show you, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great war, of the great adulteress, that is of, great, of this great unfaithful woman. It's a system represented by the war, the adulteress, the adult, or the unfaithful woman, that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Uh, here you see the position where the all that is where the adulteress, where the harlot is sitting. And you see the perversion because it talks about the, the fornication, the kings of the earth committing fornication with this harlot. And even the inhabitants of the earth have been made to, have been made to drink of the wine of her fornication. As you think about uh, this uh, picture, or you think about this system, or you're thinking of this uh, great war, actually it's talking about the judgment. If you look at the latter part of verse 1, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great war that sitteth upon many waters. Judgment is going to come upon the whole system and upon everyone in that system. The judgment of the great war. That, and of all the inhabitants of the earth who are drunk of the wine of her fornication is certain that great war, that adulteress, is the, is the great harlot 
the lewd, abandoned woman, representing and picturing the corrupt, idolatrous, unfaithful, apostate church of these last days, which will be influential during the Great Tribulation. Because this period we're actually reading about is the latter part of the Great Tribulation. And uh, that uh, great war, that great harlot, and that mother of harlots, and the mother of abominations will be so influential during that time of the great tribulation. I pray you will not be here at that time. I said, I pray you will not be here at that time. That means you will not join the adulterous church. You will not join the apostate church. You will not join the false church. You will not join the, the very opposite of the bride of Christ. Because it says, talks about many waters, that that great war seated upon many waters. As I've read to you already, Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, look at it again. And it says unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the war seated, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. That means then the water is representing, symbolizing the nations as we have explained, as we have read now. The heart of the false religious system will have and will exercise great worldwide sovereign power. The position of the mother of Hanot, the mother of abominations, is that of a ruler sitting upon a throne, ruling and controlling the nations of the world. And then he tells us something. If you look at that Revelation chapter 17, and in verse 2 it says, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And that's why as a church, I talk to you as an individual, as an individual don't join the false church. Don't join the apostate church. Don't join any church that is not standing fully on the totality of the word of God. Don't join any church that, you know, the founder just uh, had a dream or had a revelation or had a desire. Just woke up one morning and said, I'm starting a church. That's not how to start a church. Don't join them. And then not only as an individual, we now as a corporate church together. As an assembly together, as uh, people of this church together, don't let us join any association of churches that will eventually lead, uh, you know, the church astray because the Lord is going to deal with the whole system as a system and is going to deal with the apostate church and you'll find that the apostate church will have political power. They might even have magical power. They might even have monetary financial power. They might even have a, you know, a kind of power that has controls property and controls kings. Because it says, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And as a church, as a body, we shouldn't be jealous of any church. Uh, you find that, you know, that church is having a program and, you know, the kings are there and the politicians are there and the chiefs are there and the idol worshippers are there, international people are there. And then we say, what are we looking at? Look at our church. Why is it that only our members and the common, common people are in our church? Why don't we do something so that the kings of the earth, they too, they will be interested and they'll bring their money and they'll bring their politics and they'll bring their wrong ideas and they'll bring their philosophy and bring their psychology don't do that as a church as individuals run away from them as a corporate body a corporate church run away from them these are the last days because this great harlot it's with him the kings of the earth are committing fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have, made, have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication the great orb the great harlot, the unfaithful apostate church has seduced the rulers of the earth, leading them into idolatry, false worship, and corruption. Even today, many princes and nobles and great men are entirely under the influence of the corrupt and righteous religious organization. And that's the reason why we ought to be very careful as a church. As you look at uh, this uh, passage, these verses 1 and 2 in particular, uh, what do you see? It's talking about the woman. I talk number one, the identity of that woman. And it talks about the identity is a false church, is the apostate church, is a falling church, is the church that rejoices and delights in false doctrine and false worship. Number two, the iniquity of that woman. And you'll see the iniquity described there is fornication. You'll see the iniquity is spiritual fornication, spiritual, spiritual adultery, which is idolatry. And also, martyrdom, 
killing, destroying uh, the people because, uh, you know, it's talking about uh, those who have been martyrs of the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of, the, of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Number one, identity. Number two, iniquity. Number three, the influence. The influence of that woman. Because all the kings of the earth, they commit fornication with her. And in fact, all the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Number four, the interpretation of who this woman is. Mystery. Babylon the Great. Mother of Harlots. Abominations of the earth. And number five, idolatry. Idolatry. They have committed harlotry with the stalks and the stones. Idolatry. And then number six, insanity insanity literally they become mad and they become drunk or the blood of the saints and let me talk to you some more some of you young people that you don't understand that in your school or in your college or your university some young people may call you men and women boys and girls together and they say let us make a covenant and let then they pinch you and then they take your blood and pinch the other and take her blood and pinch the other and take his blood and then they put everything in the cup and mix everything together they might uh, go somewhere to put some incantations there and to put some courses there if anybody will ever come out of this united thing that you are doing this will happen that will happen then they bring the cup of blood back and they say you drink your own you drink your own you drink your own and then you become drunk with the blood of one another it is occultism and that is how people get into evil and it is taken from the system of mystery babylon it's not a it's not a new thing it's already here it is you know people being drunk with the blood of the saints and then the people that are there you are joining a particular gang or particular cult or particular society and then you are sucking blood somebody is pregnant you are sucking blood another person is doing well you are sucking his blood another fellow is healthy you are sucking his blood until he becomes lean he becomes a, you know like a skeleton and doesn't have any blood anymore because you are drinking the blood of the people it's part of mystery babylon and when you do that, you already join them. But judgment is coming. That's exactly what we're looking at today. If you remember verse 1, it says, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great awe that sitteth upon many waters. Number one is the identity. Number two is the iniquity. Number three is the influence. Number four is the interpretation. Number five, the idolatry. Number six, the insanity. Number seven, the indignation. The indignation. The wrath that will come upon them. The judgment that will come upon them and the, the, the violent judgment, punishment that will come upon the people. Please come back to Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 17, I'm reading to you from verses 1 and 2. And there came one of the seven angels which had seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show thee the judgment of the great all that seated upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication chapter 19 verse 2 for true and righteous are his judgments for he has judged the great all judgment will come upon them upon the whole system it's like if you are living in a house and judgment falls upon that house and calamity falls upon that house or fire devastates that house or it's a great stone a great thunder that wrecks that house it affects everybody in that house and when you join a false church the apostate church the church that is not built on the cornerstone of christ the church that is not standing fully internally outwardly through and through on holiness and purity the church that is not washed whiter than snow by the blood of the lamb judgment will come upon that whole system true and righteous are his judgments for he has judged the great all which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and has avenged the blood of his servants at a hand in nahum chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 4 old testament in the minor prophets in nahum we're looking at chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 4 verse 5 and verse 6 and you will see what the lord is still talking about 
in prophetic language the judgment of those who are not standing upon the truth because of the multitude of the wardens of the well favored harlot. Well favored harlot. How is it well favored? You must remember what we have read already that the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and dead with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornication is a well-favored harlot because of the multitude of the wardens of the well-favored harlot the mistress of witchcrafts you see that those who rejoice in the fact that uh, you know they're they're witches and wizards or they're the queen of the coast and they're rejoicing that they have magical power, cultic power. They're rejoicing that they're in the, in the spirit world. And they're rejoicing that they have some parts of darkness and witchcraft. It says the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her wardens and families through her witchcrafts. If you're selling families through your witchcraft. If you're selling men and women through your witchcraft. That is, you are selling them into the hands of Satan into the hands of, of your society it says behold i am against you says the lord of hosts i will discover thy skirts upon thy face i will show the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame i will cast abom abominable fields upon thee and make thee vile and will search thee as a gazing stock and you will see then that it is judgment that will come upon all those people it tells us in Revelation in uh, Jeremiah chapter 51. Jeremiah chapter 51. And I'm reading to you from verses 13 and 14. Jeremiah chapter 51. In Jeremiah chapter 51, looking at verses 13 and 14. O oh, that that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come the measure of thy covetousness remember it says you that dwell upon many waters in a way it is you know occultic and spiritual and also it is uh, something that is um, prophetic uh, many waters i've told you already it's like you know many nations and many people and many tribes and it's uh, moving among them but you understand the people that deal with occultism they'll tell you many times they find themselves in the river and they find themselves beside the river. And then they're able, when they get their power, their, their, uh, their kind of a mammoth power, they're able to do evil. But the word of God is telling us that whether you're in the prophetic Babylon, or you're in the present Babylon, or you're in the occultic Babylon, whatever it is, the judgment of God is definite and very sure. We're told in verse 14, the Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee is talking about the judgment that will eventually come and if you look at it from verse 7 that same uh, jeremiah chapter 51 verse 7 babylon has been a golden cup in the in the lord's hand that has made all they has drunken the nations have drunk the nations have drunken of her wine and uh, therefore the nations are mad that's what i tell you about the insanity the insanity of that mystery babylon the sanity of that of that uh, harlot, the sanity of that woman, I say Babylon is suddenly falling and destroyed. Howl for her, take balm for her pain. If so be she may be healed, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her. Let us go, everyone, into his own country. For her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. And that's what you find that judgment eventually will come. We're told in Isaiah chapter 50, chapter 21. Isaiah chapter 21, reading from verses 9 and 10. Isaiah chapter 21, verse 9. And behold, here comes a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is falling, is falling. And all the graven images of our gods, are, uh, he has broken onto the ground. Oh, my threshing and the corn of my floor, that which I have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared 
unto you. And that's why the Lord is uh, telling us that now uh, you need to return to the Lord. If you have joined the mystery Babylon, if you have joined the backsliding people, if you have joined the apostate church, if you have joined the false church, come out of there because judgment will soon come upon that whole system. Look at verse 11, the body of Duma. He calleth unto me out of seer. Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? Preacher, when you see it coming, this devastation and this darkness and this wrath and the indignation and the judgment and the pressure that is coming and the whole earth will feel it. Watchman, what of the night? What of the night? The watchman said, the morning cometh and also the night, the morning of resurrection. That's the rapture. It will come forth and then there will be the great tribulation. If thou will inquire, inquire ye, return, come. Come out of them because it will not be long anymore when the Lord himself shall come. And then the people that remain with that idolatrous, adulterous uh, Babylon, they'll perish with adulterous, idolatrous Babylon. I pray you will not perish. I pray you will not be with them in Jesus' name. I come to point number two. The power and the possession of the mother of abominations. We're looking at Revelation chapter 17, verses 3 and 4. Revelation chapter 17, I'm reading verses 3 and 4. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman seat upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and scarlet color and dead with gold and precious stones and pearls and having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. If you have read uh, any of the uh, magazines, um, you know, sometimes, and they are showing the picture of uh, the apostate church, maybe they show them in their colors. Or they show them what they are, or they show them in, in various ways. A full colored picture. You will understand what we're reading about here. And you'll see the idolatry. And you will see the mystery. And you will see the magic. And you will see all the things that you know this passage is talking about. That's why the Lord is telling us we come out from among them. It's talking about the power of this mother of abominations. It's also talking about the possession of this mother of abominations. The apostle said, that is John the beloved said, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting upon a scarlet colored beast. Uh, you need to understand something. There's the difference between the real church, the true church, and the apostate church. In fact, even when the Lord was going to show the apostle John, the bride of Christ, he carried him to a mountain, great and high. But when the Lord was going to show John, the beloved, the apostate church, the falling church, the adulterous church, this mysterious false church, the church that has been prepared for the great tribulation period, he carried him into the wilderness. And it's the difference between the mountain and the wilderness. Wherever there is spiritual Allotry or adultery, there is desolation, is the desolation of the wilderness and a desert of dreary waste. And he said, I saw a woman, the same great or the same harlot in verse 1, is sitting upon a scarlet colored beast full of the names of blasphemy. The scarlet color is uh, the color of luxury and splendor and, and royalty. The scarlet colored beast is actually the Antichrist. And for a time, he will support and use a false religious system to bring about world unity. But eventually, he will openly bear the names and the titles of blasphemy. And then we're told concerning this that the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and dead with gold and precious stones and pearls. The woman representing the church that has fallen, the church that has departed from the faith, is portrayed as a prostitute who has plied her trade successfully and become extremely rich, extremely wealthy. And there is a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. The inner life and the secret acts of the leaders and the members in the apostate church are full of abominations and filthiness. They are full of all forms of uncleanness. 
And as you look at this, uh, let's look at uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 18. It says, The woman which thou sawest is a great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. That is, uh, the, the Antichrist will have an headquarters. And the headquarters will be a religious headquarters as well as a political headquarters. And it will reign over the kings of the earth. In Revelation chapter 18, reading from verse 12. Revelation chapter 18, reading from verse 12. And the merchandise of gold and the silver and precious stones and of pearls and of fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all, uh, all time all thine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of the most precious wood and of brass and of iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and uh, fine flour and uh, wheat and beast and sheep and horses and chariots